when I first came to Gambia, it sounds really ridiculous, but when I got off the aeroplane, I was like, they have street lights. They have, they have actual roads. Like, I couldn't believe it. What and that was expecting? what I've, I've been brainwashed to believe that there's no running water here, there's no street lights. And I'm like, I'm 38 years old, and I mean, I truly thought that. So mm. I wanted my children to. Um, to I wanted to change their thought process, their nar um, the narrative that was in their head. I, I could never have dreamed of having one, two, three employees. Here I've got like 10 employees in less than a year. Do you know what I mean? Because the impact, you're able to impact people's lives in a short space of time, you know, and you don't need to start anything massive with a lot of money. You could start with like a thousand USD, you know, or even 500 USD and get a little coffee shop on the side of the road started with some decent signage and you know what I mean? You can do stuff here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana baby, right here in the Gambia. But I'm here to tell you that moving to Africa is now a movement. There are so many returnees that are coming back to the continent and making the continent home again. Like I said earlier, make Africa home again. What are you waiting for? Africa is calling. And I feel so good to see that when they move to Africa, they just don't move to Africa. They start up businesses. You know, whenever you start business in Africa, what do you do? You actually employ people, which means that you're going to boost the economy of the continent. Come, let's do this together. Africans on the continent cannot do it alone. We need Africans in the diaspora to work together with Africans living on the continent to what? Grow the economy of Africa. I, I, I am here and listen, I guess that they are waiting for me. I don't know if they are really waiting for me because I know that there are so many people in here who are waiting to see what am I today. But, uh, I'm late, always late. Always late. Hey. Special welcome. Ah, yeah, yeah. special guest. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Oh, good. I want to say welcome home. Thank you. Yeah, that is the first to first. What am I? Do, 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 do I have a seat? Yeah. Yes. What, what is this place? It's so beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Oh, UK accent. <laughs> in it, in it. <laughs> well, I mean, is pink your favorite color? No. 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 <laughs> but this is green. This is the green section. Okay. Which is kind of like the men's section, but the green section. Oh, but no, pink is not. Lilac's my favourite colour. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been to Gambia? Um, I've been coming for about five years. This is my husband here. Hi! Hi! <laughs> you still want to be around me? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you! You huh? must be special. You're <laughs> very friendly well, today. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you sound real. like a Gambia. Yes. Definitely real. Real oh, Gambia. Real Gambia. Yes, my You set up this beautiful place together with your wife. Definitely. Yeah. Congratulations, thank man. You, thank you, thank you. Thank I guess you. this place needs to be a place for the diaspora to have party every day. They always here yeah, and they always been welcome. And that's like getting everybody in the diaspora to go here and still, yeah, at least have a spot to be. And You are born here? Yes. Were you born here? No. My born parents here? are Jamaican. Oh, I'm going to Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> And then you decided to come to Gambia. Yeah, I've been. Your husband brought you here. Yeah, yeah. My, well, I met him the second time I came. And oh! Then, yeah, I only moved here in August, like 2021. August 2021. Oh. I moved here, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you moved here in 2021, and you've been able to establish this. Yeah, it took us about five months. Five yeah, months to get it. Yeah, yeah, to get it up and running. So many people clapping for me today. <laughs> uh, can we all sit at one place? Because I want to yeah. just have a lively conversation. It's okay. Feel free. Just whatever you want to tell me, tell me. Yes? Yeah? Nice to meet you, man. 
Whether you like it or not, moving to Africa is now a movement. Will you all agree with me that moving to Africa is more like a movement right now? Yes! yes. Definitely. Absolutely. Yes. You know, we, we're trying to change the narrative. Those days, it used to be like, let's go to the UK, US without coming back to the continent, but it's now vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I get super excited when I see Africans living in the diaspora coming back home. Mm -hmm. I mean, making Africa home again. Mm. Yes. That's so Thanks beautiful. To Thanks, Thanks to who? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it started something amazing, Wadeh. Yeah. Absolutely. Seriously. Yeah. I think all of us would be able to say we've watched your videos and been inspired mm -hmm. and read like, lots of your videos <laughs> and, um, and, and it has been an influence for us to be here. Hmm. Yeah. I guess we need more ambassadors for Africa then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Before I leave here, I need to make sure you all have a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, listen, no, listen, listen, no, listen no, I, I mean, like, I, I, I keep on telling people that having a YouTube channel is not about um, you having a channel trying to, I mean, make it a full time job or something. No. But no, no. listen, you watch my video before you, yeah, you, you got right. in here. Yeah. But have you noticed that through your videos to, Maybe five people have moved to the continent because of your video. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not about you moving out there, but just showing your life in the Gambia alone. Because listen, when you tell people that you're moving to Africa, people might think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. They do? Yes. <laughs> they do. They don't. Oh, no, no, yeah, let me know. Like, coming to Africa, what are the things that people told you? I have a YouTube channel as well. So, my channel is called Zandela's Journey, and I only cover Gambia mm. and the journey, my journey mm. of taking me and my children from the UK to Gambia. But everybody, even my family now, They've come, they visit, and they say, I don't know how you're doing this. I don't know how you live in Gambia. So I'm like, things that they think are a really big deal just don't seem to bother us anymore. Yeah. Like the power cuts and things like that. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, so you, you have that. to choose, you have to choose That's it. which, That's you know, yeah. the best of two evils, yeah. I guess. <laughs> you have to, yeah. you have to choose so things, positive. because there's so many oh, positives here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, things like the power cuts, it really is nothing. You just find a solution and you get on with it. Yeah. Um, so, but people definitely think, is she mad? Like, why not move to Greece or to no. Spain? Or yeah. no. But when oh, you yeah. live in the UK, that's what people think. Anybody yeah. who's leaving the UK is going to somewhere else in Europe, not yeah. ever oh, going to Africa. Yeah. No. That's so true. The, what did your family told you when you're moving to Africa? Well, I've not made the full transition yet, but I know my mom is living in Jamaica now and she's like, come here, why, why are you going to Africa, why Africa? And she literally does not understand it. And so I showed her some, some of your videos we watched together and there are some videos that, you know, were there and she, her mouth fell open. She's like, oh my goodness, Africa is really beautiful. So I'm in, I'm on a mission to get her here physically get her here to the continent to see because now my son is here my husband is um, going to join us soon and um, my son absolutely loves it before he was telling me i want to go to jamaica i want to go to jamaica since he's been here he's like mom i'm going home i'm going to sort myself out and i'm coming back to africa to live oh, wow know. wow i would say overall there are challenges zandela mentioned a few power cuts um the dust there are some adjustments to be made but I think overall, when I think back about the debt, mm. the bills, yeah. never ending, um, you know, you have to borrow in order to just have a, a decent life. It's very lonely. It's quite an isolated culture being in the West. Doesn't really promote um, family, community, just knocking on someone's door to say, hey, I haven't heard from you. Where are you? Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of glitz and glam in the West. There's a lot of money flying around, but it's like a veil to keep you from what you can really envision and become and do. Like I think the impact here from our work is far more reaching than just being in a nine to five and just making yourself comfortable, two cars on the drive, a nice house, you shut your door, it's finished. Yeah. But here, there is community outreach. Here, I, I could never have dreamed of having one, two, three employees. Here I've got like 10 employees in less than a year do you know what i mean because the impact you're able to impact people's lives in a short space of time you know and you don't need to start anything massive with a lot of money you could start with like a thousand usd you know or even 500 usd and get a little coffee shop 
on the side of the road started with some decent signage and you know what I mean? You can do stuff here and there isn't all this red tape. There are rules, but not so much red tape. You don't need a license for this and a license for this and a license for this, you know? So I just feel like here, although it is tempting when you get a bit tired, oh, I wish I had 24 seven light and 24 seven uh, internet, you think, okay, what are the, th why are the reasons? What are the reasons I came? You have to remember that. Now I guess I need to ask why you all decided to move to the continent. Um, what are you doing here at the very moment? How long have you been here? Um, so my reasons why were my children. So, um, like I said, I. Um, I have a YouTube channel and I wanted to change the narrative that was put out there. When I first came to Gambia, it sounds really ridiculous, but when I got off the aeroplane, I was like, they have street lights. They have, they have actual roads. Like, I couldn't believe it. And what that was expecting? what I, I've been brainwashed to believe that there's no running water here, there's no street lights. And I'm like, I'm 38 years old, and I mean, I truly thought that. So mm. I wanted my children to. Um, to I wanted to change their thought process, their nar um, the narrative that was in their head. So I wanted them to see that actually where we all come from is just as beautiful as the Caribbean. It's just and and when you're living in the West, you can be proud of Africa because I believe that black people who live in the West, when you say anything about Africa, it's like a no, no, I'm not moving there. I would never even visit there. My mom was a Rasta. She never ever thought of bringing us to Africa on holiday. Mm. So I wanted to bring my children here just to experience Africa, experience where we're from, um, so that they could be proud. Even if they decide when they're older that they want to move back to the UK, they can still be proud of where they come from. They can see their head teacher in their school is black. The bank manager is black. The president is black. And when you're over in a country where anybody who is the hierarchy, anybody who is superior is white, it suppresses you, no matter what you what you think, it will suppress you. So I wanted my children to come to somewhere and see the world differently. So this is my wife, Angela. Um, we, we took our kids out of school. We, we worked our businesses, because we had many businesses in the UK, so we would work our businesses, we would teach our children on the move, right? And they, they did not like that because I didn't want to give my children the same thing that I came out of because that put me back. So I took, we took all our children out of school. So one morning I got up about five years ago and I said to my wife, that's it, we're done. She says, what? I says, we're done. I was looking out the window, looking into the fields, looking at the cows. And I says, that's it, I'm done. I've had enough. I'm done. I said, you got two weeks. Two <laughs> weeks, get your stuff together. Two weeks, and we're moving. Mm. Um, we've got seven kids together. So what we did, he says, okay, the, the, we would take the two youngest ones. Within two weeks, we was out of the UK. We'd left the house, we'd left everything, the cars, the lot. We landed here, we walked, looked at the Gambia for two years, did a little bit of business, um, in, in the, in the two first two years, but mo most of we just looking. There's nothing more to say. I mean, and then after that, what we did is we got involved in, in starting an organisation to help people to come into the Gambia, mm. help people to settle. Because what we realised is is that there was a lot of things that you needed to know, and some people that we asked that was here already would say to us, well. If we fell into trouble, they need to come and fall into trouble the same way. Mm. I says no. I so I said, there you go. Mm -hmm. You was told the same thing. Yeah. And we, me and my wife says, no, that's not fair. It says, we, you know, we've got to take time out and help others to come. And this is home. It's, it's the, every morning I get up, I'm happy. Every morning, uh, you know, I, I'm at home. I'm, I couldn't be anywhere better. It, you know, life is. To, I, 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 it's like a dream. Wow. It's like a dream. It, you know, it, it's just, it's just something that you just wonder to yourself, how did this happen? But there's more to this than we can actually see. There's something else going on. Yes. There's a vibration yeah, going on. There's something much more powerful than any of us. You know, this is not a coincidence. This is not a casual move. This is something else that is going on. I'm here because um, I bought a piece of land here in Gambia um, 2019 
and I retired about two years ago and then I said to myself um, let me come and stay a year to see if how I'll adapt because I came from Jamaica when I was five and I've never lived in any other environment so I wanted to come and try it out so I came tried it out and I and I'm really loving it one of my my dreams for retirement was um, when I retired to live six months in different African countries that was my dream um, since the COVID hit I find that it might be difficult to do that right now so I feel at home in in Gambia I really enjoy it my son came to visit me my 31 year old son and he loved it he loved it so that's where I'm you think um, Gambia is the best destination for retirement definitely I would be just in London sitting down in the home it, it's just so nice i've made so many new friends here there's a really strong diaspora uh, connection here yeah. um i go out to lunch with the girls i go to the beach it is a beautiful place to retire absolutely I, I, i'm like i'm living my, you don't see how young i look <laughs> I'm living my best life. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Are you living or you're surviving? I am living my best yeah. life. You know, I'm fortunate that I don't. I have some income coming in, um, so I'm not in any business. But I, I don't mind trying you're something. You're retirement. You're retirement. You have I'm to enjoy retirement. I'm enjoying life. <laughs> you're not saying anything to me, man. You have to say something. Uh, absolutely. I mean. You asked why I came here. To be honest, the beginning was your country, Ghana. I, am, I have a friend who's moved there from the UK and he invited me to come over. Um, to be honest, I'm like, I'm Smith. This is like Jamaica in a bigger size. Because um, my parents are Jamaican, so I, I have an idea about Jamaica. I have been a few times in my wife. And I told her, if it wasn't for her having the kids, I wouldn't have left. I was in Ghana for the first time and I'm done. I'm, I'm sold. Let me just stay here. Um, but obviously, I had to go back to, at that time we was in Canada, because I've moved from England to Canada. I'm in Canada, now I'm here. And I like to tell people, I have the choice. For all those who are saying, I want to go to the West from Africa, my point is, yeah, go and see it, but don't plan to stay. Because I have the choice of being in Canada or the UK. I could even probably be in the States. I'm here in Gambia. So that must speak some kind of volume. And I'll come here and I see all these people who look like me. The reason why I got into youth work in the first place. Yeah. And the reason for me working with my people is because if my people are failing, so am I. I don't like failure. So I'm here. I have a talent that I don't have to work hard. Gift, gift. I, I don't. Yeah, all right. Gift. gift. <laughs> I don't. I don't work at it. I just do, and it's not work. Like you were saying about what you do, it's not work. It just happens. Whether I'm at getting paid for it or whether I'm just chilling and. Oh, yeah, but have you looked at it like this? You know what I mean? Engaging with friends, family, I've been doing it forever. I can't help myself, that's just how I do. And so, being here in the Gambia is, yeah, it has its challenges. Where it doesn't have its challenges, right? And these challenges that are here, well, a lot of them are, are just temporary, in my opinion. We're not gonna be doing it the same challenge forever. I think uh, I've seen a lot in my comment section is that oh don't mind them they're gonna regret they're gonna move back to the UK honestly it has crossed my mind at certain points but I'm here in the early stages what I do know is I don't want to go back to the UK and then start saying why not give it a little bit longer I should have given it some more time mm -hmm. Because I know what the UK is about. I know the oppression and so on. And it's no different from Canada. The oppression that we as black men face. My wife sent me something this morning that says the um, black men are the highest increase in 
um, suicides that are going on. We're already committing suicide more than everybody else in the first place. So if we're already committing suicide more than everybody else, and then we're increasing by more, that's, we're leaving everybody behind. We're not getting more educated, we're getting more dead. <laughs> More. Absolutely, uh, they're holding know, hands walking holding down the road. Yeah. Yeah. You actually right. get a better idea of family, yes. right. socialization, yeah. yes. right. how you know, it should everybody be. Here says, um, everybody here says, Salam alaikum. And you, at first, when I first came here, I was like, this is so weird, like random people just saying <laughs> salam alaikum and I couldn't even get walaikum salam out my mouth quick enough and they just gone past yeah. and I was like that's just weird, why are these people, everybody says hello to you, everybody and in the west not even your neighbours speak to you, no one speaks to you. In the west, in the west, you say for me I know that every black man that passes me, if I pass a white man I'm not doing that. Here, I'm just doing that to everybody. Yeah. Because, <laughs> it doesn't matter. because we all look like us. Right? I'm like, yes, what one? Hey, all right. Yes, baby. You're nice, nice, nice. How are you doing? What one? And when I say that, I'm being, if they need me to stop and talk, yeah. I'm done. I it's stop. a safety aspect as well. Right? Because my son was saying to me the other day, he said, oh, mom, because he's met a lot of Gambian um, friends now, and he goes out. And I said, what time are you coming back? He says, I don't know. He wrapped up at about, what, three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and I think he, he said, mom, I was shocked that you didn't say, how are you at this late? I said, because I know you're safe. Mm -hmm. And he so felt safe. safe. And I was, that just made me feel okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. The safety aspect Why of you, you don't feel like Why you in the UK? Oh, no, you, no, you wouldn't want your teenage want boy. boy. You wouldn't want your teenage, teenage boy to be yeah. out at that time because, of the night. Because yeah. most, because, no, no because you feel that like you'll get a telephone call yeah. to say he's, 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 he's been stabbed. He's, been yeah. Yeah. he's got into yeah. a fight. Yeah. He's been stabbed. Um, he's, he's been arrested. He's, he's been arrested. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, he's fighting for his life. I that's, go, that's one I of the go things into I used to panic at eight o'clock. If he doesn't get home, I'm calling them. Where are you? Where are you? There was a TV show in the UK and it was speaking about um, all of the Somalian boys who their parents have sent them back to Somalia yeah. in their teenage years because Somalia is safer yeah. than the streets of London. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah and it was but an actual know, documentary on, true, on the TV. Extreme news, they'll tell you Somalia is this yeah. terrible, war-torn yeah. place to be. Yeah. So you're getting two completely separate narratives. Yeah. So I'm not even watching them Fox News, CNN, rubbish. I want to get this clear. What are the things that you all heard about Africa before coming here for the first time? Oh. That, yeah. that uh, people are yeah. poor, yeah. People, yeah. people are begging, yeah. you know, and then, yeah. and then the images they put over is not necessarily yeah. true because you. if you could well, have been a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, yeah. they shot that footage that of footage. A, a well being built. Yeah, but that's what these things, yeah. the, these organisations and companies that feed us the information that's in the right. West. They deliberately try to keep your mind yeah. mm. on the poorest areas. If they, you know, if they're asking you for a couple mm. of dollars or a couple of pound a month, they don't want you to see that they've built 50 wells in this amount of time. They want you to still believe that it's such a bad place yes. that we need your money. So it's all part of brainwashing us to believe that we that Africa is so there's so much poverty here the health conditions are awful the education is awful um the, yeah the uh, houses are awful what uh, uh, the houses are, for me is just crazy because when you drive into some of these areas are you thinking my goodness look at these mansions yeah you don't get to see that sort of land sort of mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. that you actually live on um, yeah. you know it's just amazing yeah. Yeah. amazing and, and then, another trick they do is you see children playing playing in the streets in Africa, mm. and you'll see the clothing they're wearing, and you'd say to them, "Oh, they're poor, they're poor." Mm. It's not because they're poor; it's because their parents choose not to put them in fancy clothes. clothes because they're going to get dirty. Oh, yeah, but you see them on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday, yeah. and you're, you you yeah, and, yeah. and the girls with their hair oh, dressed, man. and they look That's true. douche. Yeah, they do. They That's the douche. trick. Yeah. So they find any little child. Yeah. With, that's yeah. been playing around in the dirt, you know, and then, and what does do you say? Oh, that's yeah. poor. They're poor. Yeah. They're not Hiya. poor. One but of the things is, I used to, I say to all my friends back home, we can't dress like the Africans when they step yeah. out and yeah. they look Whoa. so amazing Ooh. in their outfits. Yeah. We've yeah. got nothing on them. Nothing. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah.
terms of cost of living, let's do compare a bit of cost of living in the Gambia and cost of living in the UK. I mean, is it expensive to live in the Gambia? No, I wouldn't say it's expensive to live in the Gambia, but I would say that a lot of information that was put out there, especially by YouTubers, was false. Oh, including um, Maya. <laughs> No, but I mean the information, I mm. think it just wasn't realistic, yes. mm. um, yeah. I wouldn't say false, no. I think it just wasn't realistic. I think if you come here and you um, want to enjoy certain things that you had in the West, mm. the cost is not that much different. If I want to order, if I want to have something, um, I want to eat out once a week, or mm. I want to get my nails done, or I want, to, I want my children to have breakfast cereals that are yeah, made in the West, if, if the same price, if not more, because it's imported to come mm. over here. Um, so there are certain things that are more expensive, but if you are, uh, you're, you allow your children to adapt mm. and get used to eating local yeah. um, and live in local, so maybe change that eating out to once a month or something like that, it, the, it, there's no comparison. For the cost of living in London to the cost of Gambia, there's, there's just no comparison. I think it's because the, sorry, can I just add, because I'm in housing, um, there is a big difference between the housing in the UK, Canada uh, and the States compared to Gambia. Yeah. It is much cheaper here. But one thing I want to say is that set, speak to someone who's here because the standard you're looking for is going to cost more than you've been told on YouTube. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you've been told you can pay 200 USD for a two bedroom lovely apartment, no, that's not true. You're going to spend closer to four to five hundred USD a month on a two bedroom place and location is key. If you're in the outs on the outskirts in the rurally type of areas where there's more greenery, yes, you can get closer to that 200 mark. But well, if you, you want to be, no but you will have, you a, have yeah, a consistent electric. Yes, yeah, so if you want all the conveniences, more stable electric, more stable mm -hmm. internet, um, access to shops and the mall and petrol stations and you know, just more and close to the beach, you are going to spend, you know, further up the, the, the financial chain. It is still cheaper. I mean, 500 USD a month for a two bedroom, modern contemporary place is cheap compared to the States, US and Canada. But, you know, here, it, you also, need to be realistic. It's also the amount of bills though, because yeah. I was saying to a Gambian the other day, it was a taxi driver who was out of bed who wanted to go to the West. And I was trying to explain to him, like, you do not understand the amount of bills. bills. So when I checked up the amount of bills that I had to pay, which came up to about 18 different bills, mm -hmm. and was explaining that you really only have about four or five bills, yeah. in comparison, you do not want to be living there. Like, you know, like you said, visiting, fair enough. But 18 bills compared to five bills, no. Mm -hmm. You're, sa yeah. you're saving a lot more, and you've got there a, a, a better quality yeah. of life. Yeah, exactly. better quality and of here, life. One thing you recognise is that the people here are much wealthier than the West. Yeah. And you would say, how is that? Well, let's keep it simple. Mm. The car you drive, the car you drive here, the car you drive in the UK is generally on um, finance. Mm -hmm. you, borrow, you got borrowed money from the bank. The house you live in is going to take you uh, uh, 25, 25 years. years to pay for it. Yeah. The mobile phone yeah. that you're using your in the voice. UK it's not yours, and if you don't make your payments on it, yeah. they, they want the mobile phone back, they want the house back, and they want the car back. Here, yeah. people in Gambia, yeah. they, the house they live in is theirs. The what? car they drive is theirs. The mobile phone that they're using is theirs. Okay, so then it comes down to eating. You can get get expensive if you if you go to the supermarkets, mm -hmm. but if you live on a lot of natural food, mm -hmm. that's what we did when we first came here. We lived on a lot of natural food. We tried to stay away from the supermarkets. Then the price of, of living came down. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the supermarkets, then it kind of escalates. But then it's a bit hard when you've got kids. It's a bit hard to keep away from. If you're going to be honest, it's yeah. quite hard to keep away from the supermarkets right. because their mind is conditioned to have certain stuff like the cereals, the sweets, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in the UK, they put them on the front counter. So your kids are automatically going to get used to seeing them and wanting them, you know what I mean? So there's things that you can adapt, but it takes time. It yeah. will take time because it's adjusting their thinking, like pop. 
Um, my kids love pop. Yeah, they understand. Um, but I'm getting them used to drinking water. So when it finishes, it finishes. I know there are a lot of people that are going to watch this video. Um, people who want to move to the continent, also Africans living in Africa who wants to go abroad. Let me tackle that one first. Um, are there opportunities in Africa for Africans? For yes. Africans. Yes. 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 I never, I never thought I'd be able to run my own business, but I can here. And the idea of if I'm doing that for myself, then I must be able to do it for Africans. Otherwise, I should have just stayed where I was. So creating opportunities for Africans to be able to stay in Africa, it don't make sense me telling them to go to Europe, but come back if there's no opportunities here. So part of the reason for me coming here is to create opportunities for my brothers and sisters. I think um, you establish your business in a very short time in Africa. Yeah. That's an yeah. opportunity, I guess. Yeah, 100 percent. So I employ um, 25 Gambians. Oh, wow. So 25 people work here. Um, and yeah, well, I, I run a business in the UK. So my business is very successful. And a lot of people think when you move over to the continent that you're someone who doesn't have any money and you're coming here for a cheaper lifestyle but that's that was not the case with me i had a very successful business in the uk and it's still being run in the uk by directors um so when i came here i immediately saw business opportunities um i i think that if you are going over to the west as gambians ghanaians whatever you go over to the west if you want make your money mm. and come back over because yeah because gambia for me um, I watched a video that was with Akon and then I heard something about um, uh, about Las Vegas and yeah. that how much the land cost in Las Vegas before it became Las Vegas yeah. and for me that's how I see Gambia a lot of people will say I would never invest in Gambia no mm. you want to do what in Gambia mm. but actually this is this is the desert before it became Las Vegas True. there's so much opportunities here and I think if you are someone who had an idea over in the West here makes that idea flourish it makes yeah. you believe that anything is possible because it is everything yeah and, and it's definitely not just, it's not just for the diaspora coming yeah. over because one of the things i like with especially with the groups that we're in is that when we're talking about business we're not talking about business for us we're talking about business to develop africa to de to yeah. we're doing business partnerships with, africa. with africa. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. so yeah. this is not my business it's mine and your business yeah. because mm -hmm. you need to also open a business for yourself and employ your own people. Mm -hmm. So I like the collective spirit that's happening mm -hmm. in um, growing Gambia into being something yeah. uh, wonderful. I think, uh, I think a lot of us are bringing infrastructure here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So like Smiley Lounge and there's many other people that I know that are opening up businesses and even doing projects, including myself. Um, there's a lot of huge projects that are about to um, kick off yeah. in Gambia. Very interesting, yeah. very, very interesting yeah. things that have never been done before that will bring a whole load of jobs um, to for the Gambians also and the diaspora. And so you can see us as uniting together. Um, so we've come together in a good way. I, I, I will tell you guys that don't be left out because it's happening, you know? Like, uh, for me, any time, like the first time I came to Gambia, Gambia was not like this. And it's been two years, I returned, yeah. and I'm seeing new stuff. I guess by the time I come back next time, I don't even recognize this place. Yeah. <laughs> so I will tell you once again that don't be left out. You know, like, I have a problem with Africans, you know, especially Africans that were born here, that left and went abroad. You know, we are the people that complains a lot, especially when, you see the diaspora moving back here. So what are they going to look? I mean, what are you going to look for in Africa? I mean, we love being comfortable, and that's the problem of so many Africans living in the diaspora. Forgive me, I'm your one and only son, but I think I still need to tell you guys the truth. What the life that we lived in in Africa? I mean, you can see that we are not so comfortable. You know, even if you want to buy stuff, I used to stay in my room in China and order stuff, and the next day they'll bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Living in Ghana, I have to go and search for it. Yeah. <laughs> but as an African, when you go to the UK, USA, China, and you say, oh, I have 24-7 internet, I have 24-7 lights. Some of them even start saying that there is no God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no God. So I think you guys don't, shouldn't blame us 
I mean, we're just gonna try as much as possible to use platforms like this to educate them that things are happening on the continent and you all need to take part. Whatever you've seen in the US or in America, oh sorry, the US or the UK that you are, that you think it does not exist in Africa, bring it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's right. See, what, what, are the, what are the initiatives when we started sitting down with government here, and this is gonna sound very strange, the government, as a, an association that uh, help people to come in, what they said to us in private is, they said to us, we don't want charity. Yeah. And I, I, I'm saying that on camera. They said, we want you all to come and set up businesses, establish yourself that whatever you give, is it's continuous. Mm. These people that come along, because everybody always thinks of Africa, give charity. Yeah. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't give yeah. no charity. What I'm simply trying to say is charity doesn't help anything much. Mm -hmm. You can help on a project if somebody's setting up a hospital or school and you can send money and things like that. Helps it. That's so because that project is going to be continuous. But to just send raw cash, to, to give somebody raw cash, that's not helping nobody. So when we spoke to members of parliament here, ones that spoke told us the truth, they says we want you people to establish yourself that you could have a voice in the, the community, you can have a voice in politics, and you can help to build infrastructure of the country without just giving away mm -hmm. and then finding yourself short of money. I guess then the government also needs to support the diaspora. What are they doing to support you all? What are they doing? So, um, well, <laughs> we see at, at the moment. Uh -huh. we're, um, so one of the things that we came to do, myself particularly, um, I was diagnosed with stage three C cancer years ago, and and I wanted my life to have purpose. So when I came here, I worked with a doctor, and so we set up a free clinic in one of the um, one of the uh, villages. The, the villages. Yes. And we want. So what I appreciated was that we just paid for the material, and the villagers did the work. What we want now is to have somebody who, a nurse, who will be there consistently to do the job. We want the government to be involved in that. We've started an initiative. We want those to carry out. So we are approaching them to see what help, but we're not relying on them. So that's a key thing. We're not going to rely on them. And the diaspora has helped immensely with starting this new clinic. And we want to make sure that this is just a start and we're going to do them in different villages. And just, just uh, uh, one more thing, mm -hmm. Africa, you cannot take Africa and try to make it America and mm -hmm. the UK and yeah. Europe. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. Africa does not run from governments. If you look in Africa, Africa has exactly. kings, queens, chiefs, chiefs yeah, Arcalos, yeah. right? VDCs, right? So therefore, those, those, could be, those uh, organizations run the country. Yeah. The governments, and uh, we might have to cut this one. <laughs> no, 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 we might have to cut this one. The governments don't do nothing. Okay, the they government. <laughs> just one minute. The governments are only influenced by the by West. by the West to bring in and interfere mm -hmm. in the system in the country. And this is the beautiful thing about this country is, as somebody said earlier on, the red tape ain't so much there mm. because they haven't allowed the West to come in and bring all these things to interfere with you when you're not giving you nothing. Yeah. So, you know, um, we, you, I would prefer to work with an Arcala or a chief or the VDC in an area, which I do, instead of working with somebody that is sitting in the government. Because it, the government, what they're going to do, what they're going to do, they can't help me where mm. I am. It's going to be the people that are leading that area, that is mm. building that area, that know what is best for their for kids and their, their adults. Yes. I mean, African government always disappoint me, both home and abroad. And I've always been saying this, that if the African government will take this initiative of the diaspora returning and then work together as one, we could build Africa together. Because a lot of people want to come home, but the frustration that they go through in terms of trying to settle in down is one of the biggest problem on the continent right now. But Listen, wait for what am I? I, 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 I will run for president. <laughs> what I have seen 
I feel like the diaspora returning, everybody should. I mean, as soon as you land at the airport, she give you a passport and tell you that, welcome home, you are one of us. You, you shouldn't go through all this stress of applying for visas, resident permit, because you are one of our own. Especially if you're coming to develop the country. You see, what, what I have learned so far is that the diaspora coming back home, sometimes they don't even think about businesses, but for him to step his foot on the continent, it's so fulfilling. It's helping just by doing that. Yeah, helping the economy. And, and, that, and that is what the government don't understand. Because yeah. I've had so many encounters with the diaspora and I know what they go through and how they feel when they come in here. Listen, we have so many people watching this video and all I want you guys to do for me is like, somebody wants to come, what is the step that they need to take before they get in here? Or things that they need to know before they come to the continent? When you decide that you want to come here, um, you need to make sure that you are re doing your research. But don't just look at YouTube for research. You have to ring up these organizations and find out the facts of how it works. Um, and then also you need to visit. We, every single year, especially in, in the UK, I'm not sure about anywhere else, every single year we try to take our families on a holiday. So take your family on holiday to anywhere you like in Africa. Um, and and just check it out and when you come try to avoid being in the tourist areas yes try to make sure that you are um, you are helping your children figure out if they could live here mm. yeah if you're in the tourist area it's completely different than actually living here so when you come on holiday spend maybe a week in a fancy hotel and then your second week try and do like an airbnb or some sort of accommodation that puts you in the community so that you know what it would feel like living here research the schools research the hospitals anything that you're not 100 percent sure about research it that's yeah. the only advice well, I can one, give. one of the things i would say is is because that's one of the things that I, this is very important for me because I spend a lot of my time helping people when a lot of the situations could have been avoided and it sometimes gets a bit irritating because I've got a lot of other things I need to be doing for myself. One of the things I, could, I, I would say is, is when you come find the people that are in the, that, that's come, mm. that was here before you, mm. Mm. spend some time with them. Find two or three of them that you really get on with, okay? And then ask them the questions about how do you get this, how do you get that. Go and mix within the community, as you see them on the road, talk to them. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest problems, and I'm going to have to say, because mm -hmm. I'm the one that I see the tears. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that has to sometimes pay their solicitors fees and all this lot. Before you do a major transaction, have at least two or three people from the diaspora be involved in that part of your business. Don't say, oh, I don't like nobody involved in my business, I do what I want. Because when That's you... It's a Western mentality. It's a Western well, mentality, yeah. right? Join with your, the people that, that's come and they will show you the, the hurdles to avoid. Because I have to go along after you. Because they refuse to mix in the community and they, they wanted to isolate themselves and not become a part of the rest of the people that is here. Don't, they don't need to wait. We can, We are to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. So our experience is free. Mm -hmm. And can I just also say that mm -hmm. there is a false narrative that is out there about Gambia in particular, mm -hmm. that the diaspora do not get along in Gambia and that we're all mixed up and we Nonsense. have lots of arguments. But there is like a tiny, tiny handful of us that are on YouTube that people know mm -hmm. who are not here. Mm -hmm. The diaspora who are here, who are getting on with life, who are running yes. their businesses, we actually all get along. Oh, We're not yeah, best like. friends. We're not trying to fast track friendship here. Mm -hmm. But trust me, the diaspora that are here, there are several organizations that connect us together. Yes. And majority of us all get along. Yes, that's right. I think, Mark, can I just say, the one thing I think we, we, they need to, the, what I personally think is a, is a change in mindset. When you're coming here, you come knowing you're coming to the continent. You're not mm -hmm. trying to impose the West into mm -hmm. Gambia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think an important part of the transition is to remember the people that are most important to you, your kids. Because it's we're the ones as the adults who say, I want to go over there, you're coming with me. The kids, in, I don't know, I haven't heard anybody say it yet, but as far as I'm aware, the kids are not the ones who are saying, I want to go and live in Africa. The parents are the ones who are saying that. And if our kids are never going to settle here, then we won't settle here. So it's important for us to try and find 
um, kids who are going through the same kind of thing that your kid is going through at the same time that your kid is going through it because then they can actually walk through the whole process together right so that and when you um, as time goes along in a year my son originally didn't want to stay here he wanted to go back to Canada mm -hmm. but now he's like mm, I see the benefits of being here but I think that has happened because he's getting to talk to, to Gambian kids but he's also getting to talk to diaspora kids yeah. so they can go through the walk together and they're not alone I think that's paramount yeah if I can just add it hasn't been easy um, I think maybe year two I'm feeling a bit like oh it's a challenge this is a challenge now yeah. uh, year one was a bit romantic and rosy and that's the thing when you come I definitely agree with what everyone's saying even if you just pick somewhere that you're gonna come to have your first meal like smile lounge for example or there's some other ones you're going to get diasporans in these spaces yes. that is the bottom line so come where you're able to land and feel a, a certain amount of um, comfortability some trust you know it isn't a cold oh my gosh this is just so unfamiliar to me come to somewhere like this and then you're going to bump into someone you start your first set of conversations and then you start to be directed okay go here go there go there and that way you can uh, get over the hurdles a lot quicker i think you know because it's not just about the adults yeah. it is about the children as well they yeah. need to settle as well they have to so, find their comfort so, so sorry I mean, Gary, he, he, he runs a, a, a children, a young people's group. Mm -hmm. So they get together on every other Sunday. Every other Sunday. Yeah. So we have a lot of things going on. What we're trying to say to people is stop coming and do coming here or Africa and just doing your own and thing. Isolating and yourself. isolating yourself. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself in trouble and then you, you, you want yeah. to then yeah. mix. Mm -hmm. Right? Come and join in with your community. Your, your community is one of the most beautiful communities, as, as, as Zandela said, it's one of the most loveliest communities of people you'll ever find. Yeah. Okay. And we're all going through the same thing. That's and I think time. some people definitely feel isolated. If you're a single mum mm. and you've got children out here, you can sometimes feel very isolated because I speak to a lot of women out here who are single mums and decided to move out here. Um, so you feel isolated, but when you connect with one or two or three people, and the youth groups are an excellent place to do that, um, because children will pull adults together as well. Um, so you connect through your children, and then all of a sudden you don't feel so isolated when you say, what is the schooling solution for your children? What did you do? I've attempted this with my children. It's not working. And then someone says, you know, I have a tutor who comes and works with my children. And you're like wow okay can she do much so you start yeah. to connect and Network. build friendships yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then after a while when you get which sorry oh, no, after a while when you get get used to being here for a few few weeks or a few months try to think about it this way you've got to get rid of all the rubbish not all of it because some of the stuff you was taught when you was good but the cultural attitudes and norms you've got to take that and throw it in the bin Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, I'm now in Africa. How does African think? How, mm -hmm. do the, how does the religious part of Africa think? Yeah. How, do, how does the, the cultural, the cultural the, yeah, part yeah, of yeah. Africa think? Mm -hmm. Don't forget we're on a healing journey as well. Yeah. That's a whole other can of worms. Yeah. So if you come and you say, I want it like I want it in the UK. I want it, I want it like I want it in America. I want it, want it. You're going to have problems. Because yeah. Africa is Africa and Africa is not about to change for you. Exactly. Okay? So if, if you learn the African way, then you'll succeed. But if you insist to bring your American or you, your UK or your European way here, you're going, going to have problems. Okay. You'll be going back yeah. because they will not change. We, like I said earlier, we should all be ambassadors, yeah. especially for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. And I hate the fact that when the diaspora now moved back here, takes advantage of the diaspora who wants to move back to the continent. You know, um, some of them see them as an, I mean, money-making machine. Yeah. When it, and it hurts me so much because, listen, I, I just, I think I just met you. Yes. You gave me, I told you, this is my number. I'm going to see you and here I am today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've dedicated my life for this, you know. I'm not saying don't make money out of it, but let's tone down the prices a bit mm -hmm. um so i don't know i just have to say this because i've seen this going on and sometimes i feel so bad 
that I even had to introduce people to my channel for people to get to know them. Because for me, if I see that you live in a diaspora coming back, I get super excited. I don't know, maybe <laughs> this is my calling or something. Yeah, um, we, yeah. we also even have the difficulty with the locals charging us mm. more than yeah. average. Exactly. And we have to know how to bid how to get the prices and know what you're supposed to pay so if we're having challenges with the locals and as well as the dice board, it's a double, double whammy, double whammy yeah. for us it's, 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 sorry it is a male dominant country and i've got to state this and repeat that again it is a male dominant country but you can work past that and you can work it to work with you and for you um, in so many ways, um, you don't just think of it as a negative um, outlook and say, well, it's, the, the males are very dominant and so forth. Um, like it was said before, if you're trying to apply the UK here, and okay, if, it's a, if it was the other way around and there were male dominant mm. in the UK, mm. we'd, we'd have a way of dealing with that. But here, you've got to understand the culture, yeah. you've got to understand the people, mm. you've got to, time to get, take time to mix with the people, and once you do that, that male dominant thing is not really important. But if you're coming from the, I found that the people coming from the UK, who have been here for like a week or so, and they bump into that, and and, and they meet somebody with a, a domineering, a male dominant who's quite domineering, they can't deal with it. They'll say stuff like, "Oh, why did I come here? I can't cope with this," and so forth. But speak to that person after six months or a year their outlook on that is completely different yeah. mm. they can cope with it mm. yeah. because they've taken time to come down from that hype of the uk and they're understanding now because you're mixing you're speaking and it takes time it takes Bottom time just, i think mm. you you raised a good point in terms of pricing for the diaspora coming mm. over and mm. people who have established business yeah. i think it's very very key because not everybody who's coming from the West are coming with money. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are being charged as if, okay, you're coming from England or, or, or um, America, you must have money. I have said to people, all my friends who are establishing businesses now, I say, when you price your stuff, you're not just pricing for the diaspora, you're pricing for the locals. And if the locals cannot afford it, don't assume that everybody can afford it. So make your price reasonable. So everybody can afford it. Can I, can I just sorry? Can I just say something as well? Because you touched on um, on diasporans who have moved over here, yeah. and that they charge people who potentially want to move over here. But I have a huge. I have a huge problem with that. Not yes. that. Not with people right. charging. Mm. I believe that um, we people who have been here already. We have knowledge that That's can right. save you money and money. heartache and pain mm. and disappointment and potentially could save you from changing your mind and going back. Mm. So if you have to pay someone, I don't know, 20 US dollars, 30 pounds or whatever, um, to give you a list of schools that they know are accepting or your children will settle e easily for that, then we would pay for that over in the West you would pay for over in the west and then when you come over here you have this expectation that everybody's time is free like i said to you i was successful in the uk and i used to do business coaching my time is not free i will help you and i do give away a lot of information on youtube if you want to have an hour conversation with me my time is not free because i could be doing something i'm not saying that your time i'm not saying that your time should be free no, but, but I shouldn't overcharge exactly. for that. Exactly. Yes, 100%. Exactly. So you avoid those people that charge you a ridiculous amount of money just to uh, talk how, Gambia. How much do you charge? <laughs> a, a million dollars. A million <laughs> You see, no, I don't charge anymore, but that is my point. Yeah, like, yeah. People have this expectation. I did Wall of Classes, and mm. the Wall of Classes were five English pounds a week. And so many people are like, I don't have 20 pounds a month. And I'm thinking, you go to Nando's and you buy food for yeah. 20 pounds yeah. a month. But exactly. you want to go to a different country. Mm. You need to learn their language, but you want me to organize a class for free. You know what? I, um, it's yeah, not going to be free. But if you're looking for a place to eat, <laughs> what's the name again? Smile Lounge. <laughs> okay. You see, that's an advert. She has to pay for it. <laughs> so, so, so what, 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 that is correct. Mm. Because that point I was just about to make. You, you jumped in at the right time. Yeah. She jumped in. I don't I give my time away for free. Yeah. And I've saved people many thousands and thousands mm. of pounds. But 
if we all support each other's businesses, mm -hmm. we have a lot of consultancy businesses here, mm. people, uh, businesses that help people to settle. If we support each other businesses, then we'll all grow. But to come and then you, sometimes I'm out for two, sometimes two days with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get nothing. Yeah. Some, I've spent two years I, I think, running up and I down. Think, I, I think Africans are also fans of not paying money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, are, we are fans of not we, paying we, we, money. We, all you need to do is find out what somebody charges, mm. find out what they're giving, the service they're providing, mm. okay? And is is it and if they want, then the person might even give them a comparative service and say, mm. you can go over here and here mm. and check those comp comparative services. But people uh, that come with skills, I'm not going to give it away for free. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I give all my skills. I'm giving all my away for you free. Don't, you but to make money. but <laughs> the, point, the point of the matter is, nothing cannot run yeah. if it's not run in an official it's way. So so so, so people yeah. must expect to 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 pay. But you know, you what you've got to do is be able to compare and say, okay, um, what do I get for that? Okay, and um, when when does the service finish? And treat it like you would treat a it business a, transaction. A business transaction. Yeah. But this idea, because that that what you stepped on is a part of our problem in the Caribbean. It's Caribbean culture as well. Mm -hmm. It's a problem where you just want everything free, mm. and then. The worst people you get give free, they criticize everything you give them, yeah. right? So it's even double, but you get it worse, okay? Right? right? All so, right, all right. Okay, so what I'm saying to say is, because, I, because I've had the brunt of it, I've had the brunt of it, you know what I mean? So what I say, what I say is, okay, all right, I'm done. I'm done. So, um, you have a business, right? What, what business do you do so that people want to reach out? So I'm into rental housing commercial and residential. So if you're looking for somewhere to live, Eden Homes International, based in the Gambia, we have an office in Bigelo next to Coco Ocean. Uh, the building is called Aqua View Apartment Complex. So, you know, if you need somewhere, we can help you find somewhere. And if you have property that you want to rent and you don't want the headache, contact us for that as well. 371-8888 or on WhatsApp. <laughs> I, uh, well, mine is more a charity. Okay. So we are doing free clinics, as I've said before, in the, um, in the villages and our clinic is called New Way, um, New Way Community Clinic. And so all we do is try and give out as much as we can. We have free medication, um, free consultation. We have two doctors who works with us. Um, and so from time to time we will do fundraising. So when it comes to fundraising, reach out to me and um, I'll help you do the fundraising. Aww. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. We, we, mine is kind of charity stroke business. Um, we uh, want people to be able to um, help in the community, in the diaspora community, uh, in education. Uh, there's, there's things what we're setting up with, with like hospitals we're setting up. We always, we're always looking for business partners. We have like maybe six businesses developing at the moment and we've got a few more on the table. So we're always looking for business transactions. We don't mind giving people advice. You know, generally that is that's generally free. But also, what we would say to people is, what we like to do is join people together. And as the chairman of CODE, the Council of African Descendants, it's important that, you know, um, when you come across issues, when you come across situations, is that you can contact us. My telephone number is 726-4322, especially for medical care. Don't just go to any hospital. You know, you need to be recommended what doctors, what nurses, what places you go for care. Um, and when it comes to just general information in as far as how you spend your money, do not, please, do not do any major transaction unless you speak to somebody else. You don't have to speak to me. Just speak to somebody else in the diaspora and have a few people involved in your transactions, you know, um, and there's plenty to go around. And if you're talking to people, there's a lot of businesses that you can you can get involved in a business mm -hmm. with somebody else. But if you're not talking to anybody else, you, you can't do anything. Um, I'm a mindset coach. So I support people in developing positive mindset, um, addressing the challenges that they're having in life at the moment. So in particular, right now we have issues with COVID where people are having to stay at home, they're at home with their kids. 
so there's a lot of tension that's being created in the home um, so I support them in developing strategies and the right mindset to have to regain harmony in the home to address um, mental health challenges and behavioral challenges so I try and um, I work with people on a one-to-one -one basis and in groups um, of small groups as well as running programs where we can have a group like we have a group of 25 gentlemen at the moment I think next meeting is going to be bigger so I can I do all these kind of things to address what's going on with us and the business is called Manifest Coaching. Number is 2845417. And he's on Instagram, manifestcoaching.gm. Yes. All of that. Advertising. One more. Oh, please. We, we, are, we, we are not, we are not on, on, on the channel yet. We, we've had a little bit of a break. But we do run a channel called African Success. And we do a lot of information about settling into the Gambia. We have a lot of conversations going on with the local people and we try to be quite flexible. It's not a kind of chit chatty program, it's just more like it's more on business transactions, things that people are doing, uh, co advertising companies. We do advertise a lot of different um, businesses all around the Gambia, people that's opening new businesses. So please watch African Success. Uh, we will be coming back to you in the next couple of weeks and you'll be able to get a lot of information of us. I just love the pictures on the wall. It's more like you're celebrating Africans. They're Africans, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Maybe they will say that they were born in America, so they are not Africans. Not everybody. No, not everybody. Doesn't Some were born really, in, in, born. in Africa. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Everybody has born. Right. Well, I want to say thank you so much for spending your time with me. I'm so annoying, but forgive me. Uh, <laughs> I know you all enjoyed this amazing episode. Go check all of them out and don't forget to support all of them. It's time for us to support ourselves as Africans. My name is Sir Water Maya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. I'll see you all in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out. Hey. Uh -oh.